Hey, what's up? This is your girl, Taylor Wilde. Welcome back to Wild On, season two. The podcast where you get the insider's view of the weird, wonderful, wild world of women's wrestling on Wednesdays. Today's guest is a Polish sister, sharing a surname ending with an iconic ski. She also shares a love for all things spooky and weird. The only professional wrestler to make their ring entrance in a military tank. She makes all my tank girl fantasies come true. And then so. Ladies and gentlemen, my girl, Shotzi Blackheart. Oh my <laughs> but hello, thank you for doing my podcast. Welcome. Of course. I'm so excited. My spooky sister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell me, let's get right into it. How did you find professional wrestling? Oh, uh, well, so I, I wasn't ever like a huge wrestling fan growing up. Um, like my brother was into it. We played like the video games together. Yeah. And, but me and my sister started watching it together um, when I was like 19 and we just like sort of like re got obsessed with it. Yeah. And um we kind of fell in love with like the Wyatt family and we really wanted to be like their valet. That's what we wanted to do. And then we decided that we wanted to be a tag team. <laughs> and, and I was like, yes, I'm doing this. Like, let's go, let's find, I don't know how you become a wrestler. I didn't know anything about like anything about becoming a wrestler. I was like, well, how do you even do this? Like, I've never seen like a school anywhere. It's kind of like a hidden thing. Um, so I just went online one day and I was like, how do you become a <laughs> professional wrestler? Uh, and I found a school nearby me, but then my sister got pregnant and then we, we couldn't be a tag team anymore. Yeah. She, she had to focus on the baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was her own tag team it's fine yeah exactly yeah she she did she dished me for another partner um, um so uh yeah I like I looked it up and then like the very next week I signed up for uh training amazing <laughs> and was that in Oakland it was um so I signed up originally for APW in Hayward um but they actually closed down um, right before my training class started, like a month before. Oh so then I was like, ah, I have to find another school. Um, and I didn't really like know anything about like indie wrestling. I didn't even know it existed. Um, so like I had to quickly make friends and find out, okay, where else can I go uh, train? <laughs> and how old were you? I was 20. Okay. So yeah. you just dove head first. You're like, I'm not really sure what I'm getting into, but I'm doing yeah. this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and your sister, is she older or younger? She's younger. Okay. And you have a brother as well? I do. Yeah. I have an older brother. There is seven of us total. <laughs> okay. But, 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 but me and my sister are the closest because we're the only like, she's the only full sibling I have. The rest are just like half brothers and sisters. Yeah. <laughs> wow okay so where are you in the pack in the age range I am right in the middle <laughs> oh my goodness yeah <laughs> and you were raised uh by a single parent just your dad right um well uh my mom and my dad divorced when I was like four three four years old okay um and um I was raised by my mom and my stepdad and then and then my dad so okay. I kind of went like back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there was a uh, a lot of initial chaos in the life life of uh, Chelsea Blackheart. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. My life has always been a, a tad chaotic. Okay. <laughs> and do you think that is kind of what built you into the character you are today? I think so. I I mean, like my character is just like me turned up. Yeah. So yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> complete chaos all the time <laughs> I love it and and there is no judgment there because <laughs> I feel like we're kindred spirits I'm all about the chaos <laughs> like yes life is messy and it's complicated for everybody it's just how honest you are with yourself about it and how mm -hmm. honest you are to other people it's just how you come above it and there's nothing like destigmatizing mental health and mm -hmm. 
you know, any challenges we have. And I'm so thankful for this podcast and all the incredible women I have on it because we're superheroes, but like, yes, we hurt. (laughs) Definitely. Definitely. Everyone does. Everyone goes through something. Yeah. And, you know, just because you're a superhero and you appear strong doesn't mean that you didn't have to go through essentially the gutter to get here. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like professional wrestlers were this big family of misfits and we all, oh, yeah. come from, I don't know where we come from, but we don't fit in anywhere else, but here. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. So you said Shotzi Blackheart is just a version of yourself turned up and was was there like a growth period or it was like, this is what I'm going to be as a professional wrestler? I know that's kind of a convoluted question, but. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it was a little bit of a growth period. I think like, um, since like my debut, I've always been like the same character and, um, I've just like stuck with it. But like when I first started, I was like, Oh, I want to be like some, some like, like undertaker esque (laughs) character. I want to like, uh, I don't know. I I had weird ideas in my head, but then I just, but then I just stuck with being me turned up. <laughs> yeah. Which is the best way you can be because it's yes. authentic. <laughs> yes. I like that you talked about the undertaker and his entrance because you are basically your own niche of women's wrestling as a character. You come to the ring in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I can't e- I still can't even believe it. Like I cannot believe that they're letting me do the things that I ask to do. <laughs> okay, tell me where where did the tank come from? Did was that you sitting around a creative meeting and just you know, guys, do you, do you have a tank laying well, around? So I actually came out on that tank on the Indies. Uh, uh, that is that's my tank. I um I I just saw it at Walmart one day. And I've always come out with the helmet and I was like, oh my God, like I already wear the helmet. This little tank is super cool. (laughs) Um, So I was, so I I got it and I brought it with me to Florida when I uh, got signed, which my boyfriend was super annoyed with because traveling with it um, was, was a pain in the butt. And he was like, you, they're not going to let you use this. Like, why are you bringing this? And I was like, no, dude, I'm stuck. I'm going to pitch this. And just one day I was like, hey, so I have this tank, check it out. And they were just like, randomly, like a day before TV was like, hey, can you bring this over to Full Sail? And I was like, yes, yes, I will make it happen. I will make it happen. (laughs) I already thought the tank was the coolest entrance, but the fact that it was yours, you're just like, I just have a tank just laying around. Do you think I can use Uh it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Okay, so this is just a Walmart purchase. Yeah, it was just some some dinky little kids Walmart tank. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, before professional wrestling, your first real love was musical theater and punk yes. rock. Yes. Mm-hmm. Tell me about Hot Flesh. Oh, Oh, hot flesh. Um, (laughs) It was a hot mess is what it was. Um, I mean, like, uh, it it was very short lived because we did not get along. Like they were all my best friends, but I think like, um, I'm really like snooty when it comes to like, oh, well, if I'm going to like play music, I want it to be exactly what I'm into. (laughs) Um, And I was really set on, no, we have to play it like this. And they were like, and they had their own ideas. They're like, oh, but let's add some reggae and let's add some this. And I'm like, no, it's got to be strictly punk rock, the Ramones. Let's go. <laughs> so it didn't work out. How long, long. how long were you guys a band then? How long did that last? Uh, probably like a year. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, which isn't too bad. We just did like house shows mostly because we were, couldn't get into bars or anything yet but like yeah mostly house shows and um me being um super mean <laughs> did you play an instrument no i i the sing human, the uh, human instrument yes i yeah. i am the instrument <laughs> um You're i welcome. wish i could i've tried but i just can't like i'm like i tried to play guitar I couldn't do it. It's very hard. Um, it's hard. 
pr praise to anyone that can play the guitar because I've tried so many times. It just doesn't work for me. My fingers just won't do do the things. <laughs> like the touching your head and rubbing yeah, your stomach. Like what? No. <laughs> Too hard. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> and can we find Hot Flesh anywhere? Like on Spotify? Or... Oh, no. Thank goodness you cannot. <laughs> no. <laughs> that upsets me greatly. <laughs> I know. I, I do actually wish that we recorded because I thought a lot of our songs were super cool. And I wish I could go back and be like, oh, that was sick for a little bit. <laughs> That's really cool. Okay. How old were you guys though? By the way, I miss that. Um, we were like 18. Okay. Like I had just, um, I went to LA for musical theater. I, uh, I, uh, was going for my bachelor's in musical theater and then I just couldn't afford it anymore. So I moved back home and started a band and yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that is very punk rock. You're like, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do musical theater. I'm going to get a degree. Fuck yes. it. I've got no money. Get a start a punk rock band. I miss that's exactly, <laughs> that's exactly what happened. <laughs> now, did, did you ever go back and uh, finish? Oh, no. Uh-uh. Because -uh. I started the band and then um, I just, like, just kind of fucked off for like a year and just yep. had fun and like went to shows and just did me and did nothing and then I was like and then I found wrestling yeah. and uh so the rest is history yeah <laughs> well, <laughs> well it's funny though because at the time you're like uh, I don't know what I'm doing you're trying all these yeah. different things but mm -hmm. they made you who you are and yes like we all love Shotzi Blackheart so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but you don't need education you just no. Rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, yes. <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm always been a big advocate. Like I started wrestling when I was, uh, I think I just turned eighteen. No, mm -hmm. and uh, as I continued into my career, uh, I, had, I dropped out of university originally to start wrestling full time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you need a backup. You do need something. Even right. Even if it's just something you're doing part time or you know goal setting and all that, like it doesn't work out for everybody, as you know. No, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so your dad, he was uh, like a biker dude kind of thing. Yeah, my dad was definitely a rebel. Um, <laughs> he he's the one that introduced me to rock and roll. Like I I just remember like cruising in his truck, blasting ACDC. Um, like he used to pick me up from school in his Harley. My, um, oh my, like the reason I have tattoos is probably because the first time I ever saw, like witnessed someone getting tattooed, I was like four years old. Um, oh, wow. my dad, my dad was getting tattooed in our kitchen. <laughs> Um, that's and, punk. That is yes, punk as hell. <laughs> and I remember just being like, Dad, does that hurt? <laughs> and he's like, Yes, baby, it really hurts. <laughs> and he was he was getting this dragon um on his arm. And actually recently I was like, Dad, hey, can you send me a picture of your dragon tattoo? Because I want to recreate it in like my own kind of style. Yeah. Um, so I would love to get like a it's a dragon that's like 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 a fist is like holding its tail because my dad is like really into martial arts oh cool um so like I want to get that somewhere on me oh, so we have like really... little little matching tattoos that's really really <laughs> sweet uh I had uh my uncle Gary he's not actually my uncle he's just like my dad's best friend and he was around my whole life he had the really old school like eagle across his chest oh yes the tough. panther yeah the panther and another eagle with the scroll um so he got the one he was like 16 so in the uh -huh. 70s but he never went back for the color because he was like oh it hurt too much yeah so, as a toddler and probably into my early teens he would sit at the kitchen table and he'd let me fill them in with uh, oh, I love that <laughs> with washable marker and it's probably one of my <laughs> my best memories <laughs> A, hu a human coloring book. I love it. <laughs> Everyone needs an Uncle Gary. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so tell me about musical theater because, you know, that's a complete diversion for the crazy punk rock 
tank riding girl we know <laughs> yeah right like musical theater is like super strict and very just like um but I was doing theater since I was like eight years old um I've always loved acting I've always loved the theater and it was always like my escape because yeah. I had like a really rough childhood and it, like the stage was like that and I was also really shy um <sighs> But like the stage helped me open up and it was like the like the only time that I just felt like like even though I was playing someone else, it was the time that I really felt like me. Yeah. yeah. Um it was like yeah. the perfect um blend of escapism. Yes, yeah. Like I was escaping, but I was also being me. And yeah. it was it, yeah, so like the theater was therapy um for me and like that's why I loved it so much. But it, then it, sorry. But no, no, uh, but like I think like the reason I just didn't stick with it is because like um like even though it was so so therapeutic and I fell in love with it, um, I think that because it was so disciplined and so strict, I I, I just, I, I knew that there was something else that, that I needed to find and yeah. wrestling kind of is strangely that like it's yeah. theater, but violent and, um, wild and it's just like perfect mix. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I can never, it like, it never fails to amaze me how many of us are inherently shy or mm -hmm. introverted like no one would ever talk to you and be like yeah I should shy <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> I think there's something in wrestling that uh you know you, you can't have you, you don't have much shame left when you become a professional wrestler no uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it takes that part of you out and maybe it's just you know the fucks fall off somewhere along the line yes bye <laughs> and uh you know not to to break the interview down too much but you did mention you had experienced um a rough childhood you had childhood mm -hmm. trauma and uh i had caught the interview you had where you know fuck, my heart broke for you but i also have so much love and respect for you truly um you know you're you have this platform and so many people look up to you and you're using it to dis destigmatize mental health and to things that were completely out of your control. And you're a woman who experienced um, uh, sexual abuse. Is that, is that right? Um, mm -hmm, yes. And, and for our listeners, uh, you know, I know so many people are gonna be so stoked to hear this, but you know, I always think if we can help one person uh, who feels alone, I don't, you know, my whole thing is, I don't want anyone to ever suffer in silence. Mm -hmm. um, look, to where you are now, uh, would, would you mind sharing a little bit of what you went through? Yeah, of course. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I dealt with a lot of uh, sexual abuse as a young child um, from like the time that I was eight to 12. Um, and yeah, like, like coming out about it recently on such a big platform oh. um, has been like so like overwhelming but like in such a beautiful way because a lot of people have been reaching out to me about it with their stories and i've been trying my best to reply to all the messages mm -hmm. and um like it, it has been like a reawakening of healing since then so i i just so strongly believe that um just talking about things is the most important part that's the only like it's the only way to heal like point blank you just have to talk about it like you just have to release it like go of it um uh, so yeah that has been the biggest healing and um like the healing never stops it, it's it's um it's always ongoing um and, and as a as sister uh to a professional wrestler and as woman to woman thank you so much for sharing your story it's huge like like i said you have this platform and even if we can just help one person to not feel alone like yes you are a fucking warrior girl you are <laughs> thank a <you>. warrior <laughs> thank you and that is definitely why i did it because i know how i felt as a young child just 
just wanting to be able to talk to someone or relate to someone who went to through the same things that I did. And I just wanted some advice, you know? Um, so I, I, I was, I'm, I'm hoping that, that anyone listening just knows that you're not alone and that you can reach out to me. Like Mm. I I do check my DMS. I I look for, I look for those sweet messages and those, anyone that like really needs, you know, someone to talk to. Um, So yeah, please reach out to me. There you go. There you go, everybody. (laughs) Thank you. And okay. So, you know, you literally, went through the ringer and you've built yourself up and now you are a fucking NXT superstar. Tell me about your journey to WWE. Um, well, who, uh, (laughs) it, it, it it started, uh, I think like my first experience, uh, with WWE was tough enough. Um, I was at the, the last tough enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, I made it into the house, but I uh, ultimately got booted off because of medical reasons. Um, they found a heart condition that I wasn't aware of. Oh wow! And yeah, yeah. So like, it was, it it was a whirlwind of emotions because I got into the house and I was just like, oh my god, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> I'm gonna be. This is this is crazy. And then the next day they were like. Oh, never mind. What did you go through, like mentally, physically? Like you oh, were here, and it's just like yeah. boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Oh man, it was it was amazing. And then like I I went home after that, and like I didn't really know what to do at first because I was kind of scared, yeah. and I didn't really know what was going on with my body. I didn't know that I had any sort of heart condition Mm -hmm. and then I was like wait if I like wrestle or if I like do cardio could I just like die oh god like um so just like everything went into my head and I like didn't really have health insurance so like it took it was a long process for me to like uh get rechecked out and like I didn't even have anything to like show a doctor to be like hey like this is like serious can you like look at me? And they're like, well, what proof do you have? And I'm oh. like, oh, well, I was on this show and they told, and they're like, what? I don't understand. I'm like, no, can you just please help? Oh my um, God. Yeah. So it was, um, it was weird for me j- just like coming back from that. And I kind of was like for a month, like was unmotivated to wrestle because I was scared. Of course. Um, And then eventually I was just like, you know what, screw it. Like if, uh, whatever happens, happens, like I'm just going to keep wrestling. Good for you. And then the most incredible thing happened. (laughs) You were back on the indies and you were, what was the promotion? Um, Evolve. Evolve. Thank you. (laughs) I was like, I know it starts with an E. (laughs) (laughs) And Sir William Regal shows up at the end of the match yeah. and offers you a job. Yeah, um <laughs> totally totally random because I I just kind of like uh not gave up on WWE but like gave up um bugging them. Okay. You know, like I was like, you know what? I'm not going to send any more emails. I'm not going to like update my profile with them. I I am going to make enough noise on my own on the indies where they're hitting me up Um, and so like I just kind of told myself that and then it happened um you know I just did me and I worked really really hard and I wrestled my butt off on the indies and and then yeah this William Regal just shows up and is like hey want to wrestle for us now that's like the best cool. manifestation ever. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you just manifest hard enough, we it's true. Go, we'll... <laughs> it works. <laughs> I'm going to start meditating because that's such a good story. <laughs> oh, good for you, girl. But that's, that's truly a testament to everything you put into it. And truly, mm-hmm. if, you, if you visualize, if you put the work in, if you make enough noise and yes. you build it, they yeah, will come. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, tell me about your first week in the performance center because that 
performance center is fucking epic. Oh yeah, it's very intimidating. I um, bet. Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I I I think I wrestled uh, Shimmer Weekend like the night before. Like I was in Chicago, and then I flew from Chicago from my match to my first day. Wow. And, <laughs> yeah. So I was I was on the Indies like up until my first day. And I you, think I did like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I you think were I did like a hardcore match. Yes, I was hurting. <laughs> I was hurting. So I was like, oh, I hope I'm not like training today because uh, I'm a little beat up right now. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. uh, so the first week um, was that. <laughs> but thankfully, uh, we were uh, shooting something um, and like I was just kind of like an audience member for the week, okay. so I got to just like chill Woo! and just kind of like assess the area and uh, just hang out for a little bit. Very so cool. I got lucky. <laughs> um, speaking to Aaliyah last week, uh, I've learned about all the amazing uh, support systems they have in the performance center outside mm-hmm. of just the wrestling coaches. You have media training and you have uh, physical therapists and things like that. That is absolutely incredible Um, oh yes what are some of the things that you've utilized the most that you didn't even know you needed oh um so we have yes like the physical uh therapy has been helping a lot because I kind of like beat myself up on the indies I didn't really I didn't really wrestle smart um I just kind of do things um (laughs) no like 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 dive into a pile of chairs and like take bumps on concrete but um it adds up yeah it does (laughs) it really does and um I didn't listen to my coaches I was like whatever I'm young and invincible um so uh like I feel so good now like it has um coming here like my body just feels refreshed that's great and um uh before you know the pandemic started we had like I mean we still do but it's more virtual now we had like like a lot of like um uh like uh mental uh what do you what do we call what do we call him they're like 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 um like mental a sports motivators. therapist oh. no, no no like mental motivators um so like they help us you know um like balance our emotions through like such a stressful job um uh so that has been also really cool yeah. and we have like yeah we have like therapists available to us as well so um like which I love all of that like yeah me too. working on working on the you know the mental part oh um, we put so much into our physical health and yes it's so easy to neglect the mental yeah it is it definitely is but this is everything when this starts yeah. getting healthy all of a sudden your body works way yeah better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah it's I think true. I think everybody should go to therapy oh yeah definitely no matter what like yeah. just go yeah <laughs> everyone is not okay <laughs> no <laughs> we're just all doing our best yep <laughs> who has uh who are what what women uh that you work with who's become some of your best friends in uh, nxt um, I'm really close to Scarlett, um, uh, Skylar Story, who just started. She's like my best, best, best bud. Oh. Um, but I love all the girls genuinely. That's like, awesome. um, I just started getting really close to Ember. Like, we've been, we just started tagging and um, we've just had, we had like a really good heart to heart last night. And oh. um, so, yeah, I've been like, like, it's so great that like our locker room is so strong because that was honestly what I was really scared of coming here just because like a lot of people were trying to like bring me down about coming to WWE and being like oh you know you need to be careful that locker room is scary and like I come here and it's the complete opposite like (sighs) I like I really love all the girls that I work with like they're all so cool and like yeah it's it's a it's 
it's so nice. It's good, so nice. Good. The locker room atmosphere is absolutely everything. Like, yes, it's so important. Especially because professional wrestling is so niche, but being a female mm-hmm. professional wrestler is even more niche. And yeah, even though we're in direct competition with each other, it's so important for, you know, that's your family. We got to build each other mm-hmm. up. Like that's yeah. girl power to the max. Yes. Um, just on a side note, uh, I, it says we have nine minutes left because I forgot to upgrade before we started this. So if it cuts mm-hmm. out, is it okay if we, um, restart it? Yeah, that's fine. I don't have tremendously longer just in case we run out of time. Uh, Joe, is that okay, okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. It, it won't be much longer. I just don't want to run out of time. No, no, no problem. Okay. And cheers. We, and, and if we could just uh, make sure we mentioned takeover, uh, February 14th. Sure. Okay, um, so uh, speaking about the women's locker room, you guys have got a really exciting event coming up. Yes, um, you know, the, we got the, the Dusty Cup, yeah. which is amazing. Like, uh, uh, to be a part of that um, is like, it, it's really cool because when I, when I came in for Tough Enough, yeah, um, uh, which is really sad. Um, I was super excited to work with Dusty because I heard that he was going to be helping us with promos um, for Tough Enough. Yeah. And um, while I was there is actually when he passed. And the way I found out, um, I had walked in the women's locker room and I was the only one in there. Lita, Lita came in and she was just bawling her eyes out and she just grabbed me and was like Dusty just passed and I was like oh my god what um so to be at the PC when that happened was um was so emotional oh and you god. could just really and you could just really tell what Dusty meant to everyone yeah. so to be a part of this tournament and you know honoring dusty which i always thought was the best promo he had the best promo in the game oh, like, yeah. he's so he's so cool and fun oh. um i feel like you and i ashley could just go on and on and on we could probably talk for another hour <laughs> it's um, true <laughs> we've never even met before but i feel I like i feel like we're such good friends i love it <laughs> <laughs> but um i want to say thank you so much for doing wild on it's been an absolute honor oh yes I end every one of my episodes exactly the same. I do 10 tailor-made questions. It's kind of like, okay. it's kind of like a speed round, but don't feel like you have to rush because you take your time with your answers, girl. You Um, got it. You ready? Yes. Okay. Name one beauty product you cannot live without. Oh, uh, moisturizer. (laughs) I got dry skin. (laughs) Me Um, too. it, no, it kind of always changes. Like, okay. I don't really have, like, a set guy, but, um, yeah, I just have to moisturize. <laughs> I'm with you. Um, <laughs> what is your favorite exercise? Um, hmm. I think, like, ring training is my favorite. Like, I feel like I get the best sweat, and uh, it helps my cardio the most, for sure. I'm with you. What is your biggest pet peeve? Uh, when people pee on the toilet seats uh yeah that's not specific to men (laughs) no if you yes it is (laughs) if you sprinkle when you tinkle be sweet wipe the seat yeah (laughs) that is the next Shotzi Blackheart t-shirt ladies and gentlemen (laughs) (laughs) yes (laughs) who is your celebrity crush Kurt Russell. Oh, you like a little salt and pepper. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, just, mm, yeah. I love Kurt. I love Kurt Russell. Like, he was, he was daddy back in the 70s, and he's still daddy now. I love it. <laughs> Good for you, girl. I got I, I like my men's older, too. <laughs> Who is your favorite band or artist? Uh, the Ramones, mm-hmm. by far number one. Do you have a secret vice, like drinking a glass of wine in the shower? 
Mm, not in the shower, but I love a good bubble bath and I always have ah. a wine in my bubble baths. But I think like my biggest vice is coffee. Like ah. I, I'm i obsessed with coffee. <laughs> Do you drink it all day or just like a good Yes. Coffee? No, like all day, yeah. like four, <laughs> like four cups a day. Like I drink way too much caffeine for a girl with a heart condition. <laughs> <laughs> whatever life short <laughs> yeah exactly i live on the edge <laughs> what wrestler has the best entrance music oh uh definitely Shawn michaels uh like that is like my morning affirmation song like i think i'm cute <laughs> I know I'm sexy. Like, I love singing that to myself when I'm, like, doing my makeup or just, like, brushing my teeth. It yeah. makes me feel good. <laughs> I love that. That should be your mantra every day. Yes, every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your drink of choice? I think we've somewhat covered that. Uh, you know, I do love my coffee, but chocolate milk is my favorite thing. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good way to get your protein in, too. <laughs> exactly. And, like, me and my sister, we, we are both obsessed with chocolate milk, and we always say, like, like, our perfect guy makes our best chocolate milk. So we always, like, we always, like, t we always test our boyfriends, and we'll be like, uh, hey, babe, can you make me some chocolate milk? And if it's not good chocolate milk, it's not meant to be. And we have to end the relationship right there. <laughs> it's the best, like, red flag. Like, Yeah. Yeah. It is. I'd love to see. good chocolate milk. <laughs> Can't I'd be love... in my life. <laughs> I'd love to see that on Tinder. Like... <laughs> So you're like a Nest, like I don't, sorry, I don't know what the American uh, equivalent would be, but like Nestle makes our like chocolate syrup. So you're like yes. the chocolate, okay, so you don't buy mm -hmm. the chocolate milk pre-made. Mm -hmm. It's got to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you have to, you have to mix it yourself. Uh, and uh, be, me and my sister like the powder. We're, we're about the, we're, we're about the powder. I think it just like, it hit, it hits differently, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning so much. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Lastly, I know you got me on this one. <clears throat> Finish this lyric. 20, 20, 24 hours to go. I want to be sedated. <laughs> yeah. <Yay! laughs> that was an easy win. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much again. Thank you. I had a lot of fun. This oh, is so good. Great. <laughs> good. Me too. And I hope that we get to meet each other in person one of these days. Yes. Oh, we have to wrestle now. Yes, please. I yes. want to get in the ring with you. <laughs> make it happen, Joe. Make yes. it happen. Come on, Joe. We're <laughs> only, in this you. only in this business can you say, we just met, we're friends, and I want to wrestle you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it'd be a positive thing. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> I love you. I want to punch you in the face. Yeah. <laughs> For the love of all things 90s alternative rock, I want to hang out, slam dance, and wrestle with Shotzi Blackheart. Not necessarily in that order. I feel very fortunate to be on this hot streak with the women of NXT. If you are liking Wild On, please don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Taking the time out to give a rating and a comment will help your girl and her Wild On team out immensely. We want to climb those charts. Check out the Wild On merch store for all your favorite Taylor Wild t-shirts. The link will be provided in the episode description as well as on my social media accounts. Are you still craving more? Then follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Real Taylor Wild. That's wild with an E. Guys and ghouls, I cannot even describe how much work goes into each weekly podcast. It certainly takes a village, a Canadian one at that. I could not do this podcast without my badass punk rock girl band, The Wild On Team, editor and producer, Rochelle Duras, public relations, Madison Golshani, marketing specialist, Rebecca Levinson. Thank you for all your hard work. I love you guys. And until next week, stay calm and wild on.